Hello everybody, today we're going to make some copper chromite, which I'm going to use to decarboxylate niacin into pyridine, which I'm then going to use to make a nice copper complex, but uh, to make the copper chromite catalyst, you're going to need three main chemicals. I have some ammonium dichromate, some ammonium hydroxide solution, although I tried to measure the density to find the exact concentration of this, but it, it just doesn't seem to be working. And then some copper sulfate pentahydrate. Now you can buy it as this root killer for um, drains and it comes it comes reasonably pure. It says 99% on the bottle, but I just went ahead and recrystallized mine just to make sure that it's completely as pure as possible. So I'm going to set up everything here and uh, we'll go on with the synthesis. Alright, so I've weighed out about 12.6 grams of the ammonium dichromate and we're going to dissolve that in about 33 milliliters of water. And make sure you're careful when you're pouring the dichromate. It's, uh, you, don't, you really don't want to be inhaling that dust, so make sure you're wearing a mask. It is a proven carcinogen, of course. So, I'm going to mix up this solution and then we're going to weigh out our copper sulfate solution and proceed from there. Alright. I've weighed out um, my 25 grams of copper sulfate. It says 31 because I already put the stir bar in. And then we're going to dissolve that in 60 milliliters of water. And I have the dichromate solution on the stir plate right now. And uh, I'll come back when they're both fully dissolved. Alright, so we have some real nice colorful solutions. And uh, a nice orange, kind of a deep, almost red orange, and a nice light blue. Uh, solutions here and the next step is to add 42 milliliters of what's supposed to be a 10% ammonia solution but since I don't know the concentration of mine um, I'm gonna put in 42 milliliters anyway I think it's probably around 5 to 10% and if it, if not every if everything doesn't react then um, I'll just add some more so I'll add this to the dichromate solution Move this out of the way. Here we go. With stirring. Alright, there we go. Now I'm going to let that stir for about 5 minutes, maybe a little bit less, make sure everything's reacted. Here we're making the um, ammonium chromate, which will then react with the copper sulfate to form copper ammonium chromate. And I am taking this procedure from a Doug's Lab video, so if you if you want a more in-depth explanation, as well as probably better lab practicing procedures than me, then uh, definitely check out Doug's channel. He's a long-running, you know, pretty much famous in the amateur science community. So I'll link to his channel, and I'll come back when the stirring is done. So I ended up using uh, a lot more ammonia solution because it would just not go to a uh, more yellow color and I'm actually out. I used my entire stock of ammonia solution which actually wasn't very much. It was just this little bottle and it was probably about half full anyway but uh, hopefully it still works. I know at least some of the dichromate has been converted to uh, chromate. And I, I got a bigger beaker for the copper sulfate because of the uh, increase in volume, inadvertent increase in volume. So I'm just going to take this off the stir plate. And we're going to pour this solution into our copper sulfate solution. Um, so let's do it. Yep, there's a precipitate.
Drop in the stir bar. There we go. Stirring. So we definitely had a reaction. That's a good sign. Our yield probably won't be the best, but I can't complain. I don't really need that much catalyst. So what I'm going to do next is kind of just let this stir for another five minutes or so, and then we will filter and uh, proceed from there. Alright, I had it stirring for about five minutes, and I don't have a vacuum filter, so I'm just going to put it through a normal gravity filtration. So here's our our crude solution. I'm going to filter it. This might take a while, but... Oops. Kind of looks like uh, tomato sauce. Put it on my spaghetti. Obviously don't do that, but... So I'll wait for that to slowly drip into the um, beaker there. Just a quick note, I can tell that not all the dichromate reacted because of that yellow, orangish um, color that the solution still has. So, um, that will definitely be important to wash the uh, filtrate. And um, this is what we're getting on the other side, very dark uh, green solution. And some of the precipitate is so fine that it's going through the filter. So I might have to either re-filter that or just try to decant it and rinse. So, uh, yeah. Alright, so it is the next day. This was the first bit of uh, copper ammonium chromite that I got out of, uh, out of the filter paper. And then I ended up realizing that I don't need that purified ammonia that I made since we're just going to be rinsing everything anyway. So you can just use some of this uh, ammonia from the, from the uh, grocery store. And I just poured that into the solution and it precipitated a bunch more out, which I'm currently drying on the hot plate over there. Uh, very low heat, of course. I don't want to torch anything, but right now I'm going to put this into my mortar and pestle to grind, and it is brand new. I thought I would share the pleasure of opening a brand new piece of equipment. So, here we go. Brand new, perfectly clean. Camera focus, there we go. Brand new, very nice. I'm gonna go rinse this out and then I'll be back and we can crush up our copper ammonium chromite. All right, we got our fresh clean crucible, or not crucible, uh, more in pestle. I'm just gonna pour some of our product in here. See if we can fold it and scrape. Make sure you dispose of this properly. Uh, chromium, heavy metal, toxic. You cannot just throw it away. Make sure you neutralize it with something like sodium metabisulfite. So I'll just put this over in my waste area. And we can get to get to crushing. All right, so I crushed up the first batch of powder, put in the crucible, and then I'm going to heat it with this alcohol lamp because 
I do not have a Bunsen burner. So, and it's on this old grill. That's the best method I have right now. So I'm going to go ahead and light the burner and then position it under the crucible to begin heating. There we go. Put this underneath. All right, it's been up to temperature for about uh, probably a little over five minutes. I'm gonna take off the, I'm gonna put the flame out and then take off the lid to see what is what's going on. So, flames out. Take off the lid. Um, as you can see, I move the camera up. It has turned significantly darker, but there is still some unreacted parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix things up and then we will continue the heating until everything is fully uh, dissolved, or not dissolved, <laughs> until everything is fully converted. Alright, so we're back in the lab. I have our cooled down crucible with our product. It's still a little warm, but it doesn't matter. And I, while it was cooling, I crushed up the other batch. So uh, now the next step is to rinse our catalyst of any impurities using acetic acid. And uh, I'm going to do that in this beaker. So I'm going to take our catalyst, pour it in. Alright, here we go. And I'm not going to rinse it yet. I'll rinse everything at once. So now we can load our next batch into the crucible. All right, after our, I think it was three runs of heating, uh, we have our final product, our crude final product. We need to wash it with some acetic acid in order to remove the impurities. So I have a little bit here, and I also have another bottle here that I'm going to use to rinse. I'll probably do one or two rinses uh, until the liquid is no longer green because uh, that would indicate the presence of copper acetate. So I'm going to go ahead and just pour it in. This is all of this bottle real quick. I'm swirl that around. You can hear it bubbling. Rinse the sides with some more to knock down the stuff on the sides. And then I'll let it settle out. Alright, now I'll let it settle. 
We'll pour off the top and then we'll rinse again. Here you can see the color of the solution on top starting to be a nice dark green. I'm going to wait a little bit longer for it to settle and then I'll pour off that top layer and uh, get back to rinsing. Right after about three rinses now, um, stir up everything, make sure it's nice and uh, pretty much homogenous. And I'm just going to filter it off now. Be careful with this filter paper. It likes to slide down into the funnel. It's helpful to have a wash bottle. Just squirt up. And rinse everything out. Couple bigger chunks. There we go. Here we are after filtering. I've had it on the hot plate drying for a while. You can see it's a nice dark, uh, almost black powder. Still a little bit wet, so I'm going to leave it uh, here to dry. Uh, for a little bit longer and then when I'm satisfied I'll put it in a in a little container and we'll be done. Alright, after drying the powder I have I set up this little container on my teared scale. Let's see what our yield is. trick is to fold the end so that it kind of directs the, all the powder into one spot. And, uh, there's that last bit. Looks like our yield is around nine and a half grams. Pretty nice. And uh, you don't really need special storage for this. You can put it in a bottle it's not moisture sensitive or air sensitive or anything like that Oops. so uh, let me get my label maker and uh, we'll finish up the video And with that, we are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, leave a like or a comment. And if you did not like the video, go ahead and dislike, comment about what I could improve on. Uh, any feedback is appreciated. And I'll uh, see you in the next video.